125, does that sound right? So the zero is kind of a nice thing to end with because subtracting off, like when you substitute the zero in, typically that's going to end up getting to cancel. So that becomes kind of a nice one to kind of do on your own. But again, finding that antiderivative. So raising the power by one and then dividing this by um, the power plus one. So that cancels. Raising the power by one and dividing by that power. Raising the power by one and dividing by that. And then again, the plus C. But these cancel nicely in this one. So I have to do f of 5 minus f of 0. But f of 0 isn't a thing because it is just 0. Because these are all going to become 0. So I essentially can just substitute the 5 in. So I get 125 minus 25 plus 25. These cancel. So this ends up being 125 which hopefully you see is a lot easier than trying to draw this and trying to find that area under this curve because this one would be like a parabola and so we try to be finding that area underneath that parabola in this case that wouldn't be a shape that we currently know how to do anything with other than what we just did. Um, so getting into these last couple not too different from what you've seen already um, Kind of finishing these up. So again, now I think these get a little bit uglier because I think the power ends up being like giving us a fraction. So this is x to the third, but then I have to divide by three, right? So I'm going to have to do eight to the third divide by three minus a negative six to the third divide by three. They raise the power and then I have to divide by the power essentially. So not a very nice number here. So let's see how they, I guess it's on a worksheet, but um, I think they just round to a couple decimal places. Well, they left as a fraction, I'd be okay with. Because it's like 170.23. 170, oh sorry, 170, yeah, and two-thirds, or 0.7. Now careful, negative 6 to the third is a negative, um, so this is going to become a positive 72. So it would be 242.7 or 242 and two thirds. All right, and then here, um, so again, same, actually the same first half of this. But we can't forget about the 4. So this becomes plus 4x to the first divided by 1. So I have to do f of 5 minus f of negative 3. When you're subtracting, just make sure you subtract that whole second part, not just that first term. So I usually try to do them separately and put them in parentheses. So like I'll do this first half and then actually figure out the second half and subtract it off. ends up being a negative 21, so plus 21, right? I believe. So 82.7 or 82 and two thirds. Right? Yeah. So 
okay? Good? Okay, let me get you guys a worksheet. Now on here, it does say to draw and shade three of them. I don't really need you guys to do that. I want you to think about, I mean, especially the linear ones, think about how we used to have to find the area of the trapezoid. Um, just being comfortable with that. You don't have to draw and shade. Is it a penguin? No. Is it a penguin? Oh, it's good. Yeah. Is this another one like last chapter where it goes like this, like a hard way and an easy way? This is the easy way. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Well, yeah, so I guess kind of, yeah, like yesterday, I guess with the trapezoids and stuff with the hard way, it's just that that doesn't work very well when it's a curve on the top and it's not like a circle in particular. So yeah, kind of maybe, your, I don't know, part of your question is will we have to do it with the trap? I might ask you to actually find, you know, still go back and find the area of a trapezoid, like the normal way, but um, probably not a ton like that. You don't have to draw them. You're okay. Just solve them. Front and back the rest of the time. Yeah. 